Hey, welcome guys. This is me, Taylor Gibson, and I'm here with Adam Ricketts of Single Step Entertainment. Hello. I understand you have your own company that you're doing, and we're going to be partners. Yeah, well, like a lot of things right now, it's kind of more like in-name only. Like, like, we dream of it becoming a real company one day, but, yeah. you know, there's all, you always have to start somewhere, and this is where we're all starting at. It's where I'm starting at. Yeah, that's where I am, too. Um, we're a grassroots organization. <laughs> Everything we do, we do together. Yep. Tell me, what what's your company about? Single Step Entertainment, well, the, the name originally came from a quote, so a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step or single step, and that's where the name comes from. I thought it was one, it was a nice quote, it's a, every, every journey, anything you do, project, a work we have to do, it's, it starts with one thing. And and also kind of goes with travel, because I like to travel a lot, so I <laughs> journey yeah. of a thousand miles parts, that worked too. So like, what else would you like to know? Like. Uh, well, um, we're going to be showing some footage of the drone shot mm -hmm. in this video, so tell us about how you use your drone to get aerial shots and, and some of your photography work that you've done. So, I, a few, like, right before the pandemic, I purchased a Mavic Mini for about $700, and that's the, like, kind of like a deluxe edition kind of thing, where it has, like, three batteries and, uh, and a carrying case for it. And, Lately, since there's really nothing else to do around here, I, I've been really flying, flying it around, and getting some shots of different things. Uh, it's a really drones are really useful tools, and, and one thing that's really good about the Mavic Mini is that it's one gram under the FAA limit to get it registered, so you don't have to get it registered, which is nice. And it's also it's very small; it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. I can literally throw it into my backpack for school, and I can just walk out. It's like here it is, and just take off, nice. which is nice. But yeah, I love using the drone. What do you see Single Step Entertainment being in the future? What's the long-term goal? I mean, I want to get into more feature production eventually, but right now it's just mostly like gig work and it's like smaller things. So I want to get start doing more narrative work, which I, I have done some, but not a whole lot, which I'm kind of, I feel like I want to do more, dang it. And I had a couple in mind, and then the pandemic happened, and it kind of derailed everything. But, um, yeah, yeah, eventually I want to do more, like, like more get toward the theatrical thing like a lot of people do. Or, and maybe diverse into it, because I also do photography too, so I want that to also be an arm of the company, you know, just to diversify the company a little more. But, yeah. Yeah, and by the way, there's going to be links down in the description to Adam's Facebook pages. Uh, what, else, what else do you have? Um, I have a website, too. Littlestepentertainment.com. Yes, there's a very long web address. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, it works. One thing we can do, Adam, is if you actually pull up some footage or photographs, mm -hmm. we can have you like, do some commentary on them. And... Let's see, so here's the drone footage. This is my first, the first compilation of many I plan. Just like the last couple months of like, being in quarantine, and and some of it's actually before the lockdown, like a week before the lockdown. And then um, then there's Im images of trains and sunsets and stuff like that. Stuff and then, Trying to get very creative with the drone while well, still not breaking any rules. <laughs> as, even, as drones are like, yeah, drones are useful, but you really have to be careful with them. What's this one? Now, this one is my um, my first wedding I ever filmed. That was nice. It was my cousin Cassie's wedding. And uh, I heard they're just they're expecting a newborn soon. Congratulations, Cassie. <laughs> and, and Kevin. <laughs> So this is their wedding. I filmed it, and it was in November 2018 at the Line Hotel in Washington D.C. So it was also it was my first wedding and also my first out-of-state gig. So that was pretty pretty cool. It was very cold. <laughs> so Washington D.C. on a rooftop in November, it was freezing. Yeah. Um. This, well, you know, people up north are like, "This is okay, I guess." And I was like, "No, I'm from Florida. This is like a completely different kind of cold." <laughs> But uh, it was very nice, and I wish I brought more people to work on it with me, because I basically just one man banded it the whole time. Yeah. Um, but I did, I did get a little help from my mom, but basically she was just watching my other camera in the back, looking toward the altar. 
but I mean, I was out running around and, a, and I should have worn a, a professional like, like, like shirt and everything because I was running around in a suit, you know, because I was at a wedding. So I guess that's it's kind of awkward when you're filming your cousin's wedding. You're, you're a guest at the wedding at the same time you're working. So it's kind of like a, which how do I dress? <laughs> right. Yeah. Which next time I know to bring, uh, like, get, like maybe like a branded shirt or something, or something a little bit more that I could run around easily in, but still look like like a nice casual kind of thing. You could also make your own T-shirt that like looks like a tuxedo but has like your logo. Yeah, I have seen. I think I might do that for, for special occasions. That was a beautiful wedding too. It was very nice. We did some travel photos. Oh, this was one I did at uh, last summer. Which is, uh, yesterday was the one year anniversary of this video. I did a video at Jetty Park near Cape Canaveral where I just filmed like the cruise ships going in. And man, the times where you could go to the beach and you don't have to worry about staying six feet away from the person. <laughs> right. Uh, what better days. That park's also, if you're ever going to Cape Canaveral for a launch, that's a really good place to do a launch. A lot of the rocket videos I did were from that part. So, it's a nice place, and uh, I want to get more because I just got a annual pass to um, play Alinda Beach at Canaveral National Seashore, right next to the Space Center. So maybe I can get some stuff there. It's a really nice beach, too. Yeah. Good, uh, probably would be a good filming location too. It's a nice, wide open beach. So what else I can? Oh, you want to share some photos too? Um, this was a, these were a couple I did recently with the uh, UCF Photography Club, and they, um, they we we went out to New Samira Beach and we did some stuff it, really early in the morning, like right at sunrise. So that was like a good uh, hour, fifteen minute drive up there at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it was worth it though. I got some really good shots. I guess I just like cameras. Basically, I just like using cameras. I like filming with them. I like taking photographs. It's such, it's such a neat device that I just always been interested in. Yeah. Um, right now, mostly I use a, I have a 70D and a, a and a and a Canon camcorder too, and I use for like long duration stuff. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I also do um, um, theatrical recordings as well. And oh, there went the videos <laughs> so this is one this was one for a fiddler on the roof that i recorded one time it was my first theatrical recording so i did that too and i used the camcorders too because i tried one year with the with the dslr and if people know dslrs you know you can't film extremely long duration stuff with a dslr it's just it, the camera just like i've had enough please put me out of my misery yeah <laughs> it'll just burn up and just like it's like Put, please, please kill me. <laughs> and, um, so I ended up teaming up with my dad, and we got an actual camcorder that could just keep going and going for hours um, without overheating. And it has two uh, memory card slots, so we, so if one card fills up, it just goes straight to the other one. Oh, are you recording the part where we were talking about Odyssey of Fire pictures? Oh no, we just no. I thought we were, we were going to talk about that. Yeah. So. I have an idea. I actually just had it while we were making this video, while we were talking. But I want to make a photo shoot of all sorts of different kinds of characters for Odyssey of Fire and making costumes and special effects, makeup and everything just to, just for photos to, to make concept art for Odyssey of Fire later down the line. Wow, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I'd love to have you as the photographer. There, I would be honored. <laughs> yeah, we gotta find uh, all sorts of good models for the characters and stuff. Mm. And costumes will be pretty expensive, but I think we can we can pull it off. Even if the it's not gonna be like exact, but at least like like we were talking oh. about, like you just want to get the general idea across, basically. So you want right. to get a concept art. Yeah. Start out simple first, and maybe we could show them the people and people might best in the idea or something. Mm -hmm. You just have everything together for one giant pitch meeting. Boom, there we go. <laughs> just tell them all the best work that we do. You know, we were also, we were talking about recently too about doing some like, like quarantine type, like one, two man shorts, which are still coming along. I'm still trying to 
right into it. I had some other stuff going on lately, but I really want to do, I have a couple in mind that, that wouldn't require like a whole big group of people, which I know we can't really do right now. And it's really cool concepts too. I think I think one of the concepts kind of got a little too far ahead of me. So I'm like, like, okay, too complex, too complex. And there's other ones too, where I had an idea about aliens and a radio. That would be kind of cool. I'm going to call it a... It's, right now, the working title is a WUFO, like a radio station. <laughs> Extraterrestrial radio. Yeah. I'm debating right now whether I want it to be like a commentary of like current events. Like everything going on in 2020 and the aliens being like, I don't want no part of that. Heck no. <laughs> but I was like, ah, do I really want to cross that line? But even if it do, it could be like a... Like, like a like kind of like a spongebob thing where it's just like here let me tell you about it like one explanation later and it just cuts the afterwards and the aliens are like dang you guys are going through some crap like yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's that's some things i want to do and i really want to get it done before school starts back up again late late august i think it was right august 24th i think it's the target date right now for school um i don't know that could move i don't at this point i don't even know (laughs) Because I really, I, I, you want to get back to doing big, big stuff with the large group of people. Of course, I want to, and a lot of our friends want to. But yeah, I hope so soon. I think some of us are starting to get the idea of maybe doing stuff in like smaller, more like skeleton crew kind of stuff, like not like a whole bunch of people. But the only problem with film sets now is that you're very limited in what you can do. Like even if you do have a smaller crew, like you. I mean, first of all, you got a smaller crew, you're limited to only doing smaller things. Yeah. Like, big productions can't happen. But then you have, but of course, that's also, you know, you have, if you want to shoot a scene that has a lot of people, like extras and stuff, Mm -hmm. it's not really a viable option right now. That's why we're in pre-production for The Voice of Harmony, and we have stuff like that planned, but it's not going to be so long after COVID. Yeah, but it just it really has just affected us, really at all. Like it, you know, it's affected so many different people in so many different ways. But especially in the creative side of stuff, you know, kind of like we're just itching yeah. to do more stuff, but we can't as much as we want to, and as much as everyone else wants to. Just it's like I just want to get back on a film set. Dang it! It's... Yeah, small things, like very small things. Yeah. Um, are possible but they were and we're talking like very few actors very few crew and everyone wearing a mask you don't want to have too many actors like you want to have like two or three maybe at most yeah one place and then and then you also don't want them doing too much like physical stuff with each other Mm. where you're creatively like limited in what you can do. I mean, there's a lot you can do outside the box, like art house. All pretty much all you can really do, like art house films, like very simple things. Like it's you can't really go too far out there. Right. Yeah. Or animated stuff. You know, they can always do that. Yeah, but... Animated. I think animated is gonna take off from this. Oh, yeah. Because it just, you can record it at home. Like, you basically, you just have a setup like I do right here where you have just a, I can enter a microphone and a stand and you just record into Audition. You just, and then animation, you can also do it at home cause, and a lot of them do it at home. So I think, I think that's going to take off during all this because yeah. it's all live action. I think some of that's starting to go, but most live action filmmaking I was done for who knows how long at this point. But, yeah, live action. I mean, everyone's gonna always want movies, and oh, you yeah. know, just film, just like books, just like anything else. It's never gonna phase out. All right. All right. So well, yeah, like I said, all of Adam's stuff will be in the description. We'll have his website link there. I hope you guys have a great Saturday, and for the fan book. All righty.